Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamel. Today we're we'll going over some visibility things and how to make your design a little bit easier to lay out by using some of the tools that are built into the visibility toolbar. I think it's called that. Anyways, let's check it out. So first things first, uh, you always have the ability to turn layers on and off. And this is something that I do pretty often. Uh, over on the right side here, this is the layer manager. But basically, you know, if you want to get rid of, say, the copper planes, you could just, um, I'm sorry. Say I was just looking to work with the inner layers here. This looks like a big pile of spaghetti, but that's a little bit better, you have to admit, uh, without, without the planes there, you know, especially if you isolate it down to one layer here. To make it a little bit easier than that, even if you're just following the rat's nest, which are these white lines going from one pin to another, you might even want to get rid of some of the components that are on the front and back side here. So I'm going to get rid of the front and back side components here, and now it's literally just trying to route from you know one point to another. I guess if you don't have the footprint in there, it might be a little bit more difficult to actually uh, see what you're routing to, but you might want to get rid of the front side footprints and, and things like that. Now what you see is when I start routing, it actually starts to make other things visible here. And uh, so one thing we can do is actually just to get rid of the, the ground pour that happens on the back side here. So to do that, I could just unfill the zone by hitting Control B. To fill it back in, it's B. Or you can right click uh, on the edge of the zone and do that. I, I personally, you know, I'm, I'm always kind of hovering over the B key as I'm doing this kind of thing. And that's helpful because, um, you know, if you want to see what else is below there before you actually start routing things, that could be really, really useful. Uh, okay, so let's let's go and turn all these layers back on here now, and let's look at some of the other visibility options here. Like I said, you could always turn off some of the other backside stuff here as well. Uh, but over on the left side here, we have some other options around the the plane. Now, uh, this is a big ground fill that I have here. This is this is an unorthodox layout that I did here, um, so please excuse that. But um, but it does have a big ground pour around all of the components on the backside, and. Uh, so I might want to just not see that. Right now you see that it showed the, all of the filled zones are filled in right now. We can just go and turn this off, right? So now the zones are still here on the outside. Ooh, where is it? Uh, you can kind of see it here. Oof, boy. Red on black, not easy. Uh, let's see if it crosses over anything here. Kind of doesn't. Well, you can kind of see it here. So it's, it's just on the outside here. And um, uh, so the zone is still there, and I've, even if I select it, you can see a little bit better. So you see there's zones here, um, but they're not filled in, right? And even if I hit the B key, it's not filling in. Now, this is actually problematic. If you do have this selected, I've done this before where I've had this selected, and then I keep hitting the B key, and I'm like, what is going on here? I cannot get this zone to fill in. That's very, very confusing for me. Uh, so usually, I don't use this one. Now, you can also do things like this, where it's showing now the... Uh, what is basically the vector that the program is figuring out and filling in here, right? So it says, okay, I need to fill in everything around here. Let's just turn this back on just to visualize it. But I, I have to draw around this via here. The, this ground plane should not be connected to this via. And so it's saying, okay, I'm going to go along. Oh, got to hop over these different vias here and things like that. Personally, I do not find this one very useful. Uh, and like I said, I'm usually using, I just keep it filled. If I need to turn it off, I either Control-B or one other thing we'll show here in a second. Uh, okay, we can also do the same thing. We can start to not fill in things like the footprints, uh, the, so the pad footprints, rather. Uh, and so if we do that, we just show these in outline mode now. And now this is, allows us to see like things where we're routing traces through different footprints here. Again, this can be confusing if you don't know what you're playing with here. If you just start clicking through this toolbar, it can be a little bit confusing. But they, this can have some advantages for when you start to, you know, you have like a, a large trace going underneath. You want to make sure it's connected to all the pads here. If you start having DRC errors where you see just like those little tiny rat's nests that are not quite connected, this can also be helpful for kind of quote unquote seeing through a pad as well. So this is another visibility thing. Again, not one that I use very often, but when you need it, you kind of need it. Same thing here, we can also do the same for vias. So if you want to see, okay, is the trace connected all the way to a via at the, the center point of a via here, that can also be useful. Again, not one that I use unless I'm in a bad place. And then finally, this is the weirdest one. This is now the traces. Let's go to a different layer here. Uh, yeah. So I'm actually on layer two here. You can actually see traces. And again, this could be useful because you actually see the intersecting joints here, but you don't actually see the trace itself. So let me just turn on the two inner layers here. So now we just see the traces, and it, wow, like it that's kind of crazy. You can kind of see the crossover stuff. Again, I'm not certain what this is useful for. I, I do like it for if you have like lots of segments here. Sometimes you get a, you know, as, especially if you're using the push and shove router, there can be lots of weird breaks that you don't know about. Like, so right here, you wouldn't no normally notice that this is two segments. So this is one segment, this is another segment. You wouldn't normally see that, but that could be useful if you want to clean up your design a little bit. Some of it, I mean, it looks cool. Uh, but let's get to the final tool here. I'm going to turn everything back on, turn footprints back on, front and back. 
And OK, so here's one of my favorite tools. Uh, this is the high contrast mode. And now what this does is basically whatever layer you're on, and I'm going to cycle through the different layers here, it just shows that layer, that layer's color. And so, so this is the top layer with a bunch of planes, inner layer with a bunch of horizontal traces, uh, inner layer 2 with a bunch of vertical traces, and then back layer with a bunch of components and ground plane. And this is useful. So now if I start routing a trace, I can basically, I can see, you're going to see where some of it intersects, but it, um, and, and it will highlight stuff as you go through. But now if I switch to a different layer, right, now I'm on layer 3, or sorry, that's layer 1, let's go to layer 2, right, you just kind of see the trace that's active and the trace that, and the layer that you're moving to. And I personally find this really useful, especially if I'm doing you know, a bunch of push and shove routing here. It will, it will highlight any trace that is modifying as the push and shove router is moving stuff out of the way. But I find this really useful in high contrast mode because now you're kind of just seeing what you're interacting with. And really, any gray space in this case is, is, is room to run, quote unquote. You know, you basically, you, you, can, you could take this trace and, and start to move across the board. Now you see, as I start to move vias that move other things, right? So now I'm moving vias that are interacting with other layers. It also does highlight those layers. And it starts to do crazy things if you really start to mess around. I would not suggest moving, you know, using the push and shove like I just did there. But, uh, but like I said, the gray space represents a much easier way to kind of route out where where you're taking your traces uh, in in high high complexity situations. And uh, and you know, as your board gets more and more complex, you're going to run into this more and more. So there's lots of different uh, lots of different tools for you as you are doing layout. Uh, this is going to be kind of a personal preference thing. You're going to have to figure out what you find the most useful. I mean, I, I have friends who are colorblind as well who are, the, the colors don't matter at all. So the high contrast mode also helps with that. Um, you know, if you need other usability things, that can be useful in there. Um, but uh, the rest, it just kind of comes down to what works for you. You know, if you like seeing traces in outline mode, maybe that, maybe that works really well. You're going to have to play around. Uh, what I would recommend is that you have like a default, you know, and you go back to. So like I said, you know, showing the planes is my default because if I, if I turn off that, that if I turn off the planes filling in, I could get really confused about that. So uh, definitely be careful about that, but play around and see what works best for you and, and your layouts will definitely get better. If you want to learn more about how to do layout, you can do so over at contextelectronics.com. That's a course where we teach you how to build electronics from scratch, custom electronics, and uh, we go over this kind of stuff often. Uh, and then if you want to talk, talk about the, the feature itself and maybe high contrast mode or other stuff here, or ask why, why you wouldn't want to fill in a trace in the first place, uh, you can go over to the KiCad forum. That's forum.kicad.info. There's lots more information over there. We're going to make more videos here about usability and layout, and uh, looking forward to more, more videos here on Contextual Electronics. Thanks for watching.